Okay, so recently I got back from a trip, ready to begin playing Jack and Daxter, a personal favorite of mine for this November's retrospective. And what do I come home to? Treefall Studios' newest release, Pitterpot, on the PS4. For those of you who don't know, I've reviewed two of Treefall's latest releases, The Perplexing Orb and The Gem Collector, which are still among the lowest scores I've ever given on this channel. My main complaints with the game stem from the lack of effort and quality assurance put into each title, and I even went so far as to make a full video dedicated to explaining some of the potential changes I could see benefiting Treefall's future games. Now, after years of development, Treefall has released its newest creation, Pitterpot, a 3D platformer in the vein of Croc and Crash Bandicoot. Let's take a look and see if Eli Brewer has managed to create a game that'll change his studio's poor reputation. Well, the story's definitely a disappointing way to start. A set of still images describe how Pitterpot's garden was taken over by a group of evil plants called the Kudzu. Who is Pitterpot? Who are the Kudzu? Who are the other NPCs plopped around the map? I have no clue. And the game doesn't really explain much more before throwing the player straight into the first level. Look, I get that 3D platformers aren't typically expected to have deeper moving stories, but some context is necessary to make me understand why I'm collecting all of these seemingly useless MacGuffins. It's not a major issue, but as far as first impressions go, I've seen better. From the first level, we learn about the game's structure. In each level, there are acorns and seeds the player will collect. Acorns are the equivalent of stars or jiggies in that they unlock additional levels in the hub world. Seeds are like coins in that they're relatively useless, although collecting all of them in a level marks it as complete, and eventually they're needed to unlock the final bonus stage. Each stage serves as a set of platforming and puzzle challenges as Pitterpot makes its way around the map. Each level also has five golden pots that can be collected to gain one of the acorns, and most have a power-up or ability of some sort as well. These include seeds that grow climbable vines, exploding scenes that destroy blockades, and seeds that create plants that shoot aimable projectiles. The thing is, these gameplay modifiers only help if the game is fun in the first place, and unfortunately, Pitterpot fails to be much more than a frustrating mess to play, mainly due to the controls and lack of quality assurance. This little guy is difficult to control in the air, far too heavy, stiff to move, and slides around like every level is missing some friction. Everything is just so amateur, with hitboxes all over the place, a lack of animations for different actions, and an attacking move that barely looks like it does anything, making hit confirmation unclear. I was able to make it from start to finish, but the frustration of doing so was just unbearable at times. And as poor as these controls are, the design of this game is the real letdown. Because while the controls are frustrating due to a lack of playtesting, the level design is just a sign of pure incompetence. A combination of elements meant to frustrate the player and waste their time, even if the game only takes two hours to beat. For one, Pitterpot is granted four flower petals as a health meter. Each hit takes away a petal, and when they're all gone, it's game over. The issue comes with what happens when a player loses their petals. Any collected acorns are retained, but golden pots and seeds are completely reset, requiring the player to go through the level all over again to complete it. This is only a minor annoyance until the other design flaws set in. For example, if Pitterpot falls to its death, it doesn't respawn in the spot from which it jumped, but rather at the start of the level or one of the incredibly sparse checkpoints. So if there's a tricky spot that takes time to reach, one fall means the tedium of returning to that spot is assured. And that tedium is never ending, from the fact that the seed bombs are lost upon use for no reason other than to pad the runtime, to the infuriating execution of the beanstalks that require the player to carry each seed from location to location, going in circles to reach each new item only to return to the previous area to see if there's another surprise pot that needs filling. The lack of clarity in controls is another annoyance. While some of the controls are explained via on-screen text, and some others are told to Pitterpot by the barely visible NPCs in the levels, there were a few oversights that left me stuck for quite a while on what to do next. As an example, the D-pad seemed relatively useless at first since it doesn't work in the menus or to control Pitterpot, but all of a sudden, and without explanation, left and right on the D-pad are used to aim the cannon plants, a bunch of wasted time simply because the mechanic wasn't properly explained. Top all of this off with the absolutely terrible quality assurance. Bugs, glitches, poor design choices, these all could have and should have been playtested 
found and fixed before the game's release, but weren't, leading to simple issues such as unplayed levels stating that they're complete and boxes floating above Pitterpot's head, as well as troubling and frustrating problems with Pitterpot getting stuck in the ground or unable to run for no discernible reason. Honestly, just an hour of playtesting by someone who wasn't going to sing the game's praises would have been enough to shine a light on most of these issues, meaning that the developers either didn't care enough to find them or didn't bother to fix them. Either way, it's indicative of a lack of effort, even apparent in the Options menu. Or no, I'm sorry, the Option menu. That said, the game does function to some degree, and there are some positives. The boss fights are pretty welcome, and while neither is spectacular or innovative, they do shake up the gameplay and bring something new to the table. Pitterpot is actually a pretty well-designed character, and even the NPCs are acceptable for the most part. While I won't say the art is award-worthy, it is at least serviceable. The animation may be lackluster, but the little touches such as Pitterpot shining in the rain, or its pot getting filled with snow, add an unexpected charm to the game. However, for almost every ounce of potential the game shows, it follows it up by falling flat on its face. What's the point of cool rain effects if the rainy levels are too dark to see anything? How enjoyable can a boss fight be if it's full of glitches and the music is ear grating? How can I enjoy the story's artwork without understanding an ounce of the story and while being forced to listen to repetitive and irritating music? Uh, yeah, I know I mentioned the music twice, but seriously, it's pretty bad. Repetitive and annoying, it sounds like some of the songs I made when I was first learning how to use FL Studio. At first I thought it had potential, but after a short time, it began to grind on my nerves and each new track brought the experience down even more, making it the perfect metaphor for the game as a whole. I have no reservations about saying that Pitterpot is Treefall Studios' best game yet, but it's still a disappointing mess that needed a lot more work and a ton of playtesting before being released as a paid, finished product. It's as though someone knew how to develop a game without knowing how to design one, like a robot was told to make a game and it spit this out. It's playable, but it's not fun. Which is why Pitterpot on the PS4 gets a 3.5 out of 10. Honestly, I've given up on Treefall at this point. It's clear that Eli Brewer has no intention of making a game out of passion or love of the medium and is instead content with releasing unfinished products to make a profit. And between that and reports I've received of alleged mismanagement and poor treatment of employees at the company, I can only recommend potential customers to stay away. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe to see more Mighty Reviews and other gaming content. And as always, have a mighty nifty day today.